All right. Let's go and take a look at uh, question number two. So question number two. It's uh, another circuit where we have uh, an inductor, we have a capacitor, and we've got two resistors. Yeah. And they say they want us to find the energy stored in the capacitor after the switch has been closed for 8 tau. Where, of course, 8 tau is going to be our time constant. Um, something else I say uh, is here, assume initial capacitor voltage is zero. So V of C zero is equal to zero volts. Okay. Uh, so looking at this, uh, we know that... Uh, this switch will close at time zero. So before this, it was open. But once we close it, uh, it'll create closed wire and it will allow current to be induced and will travel throughout the circuit. So go through this way, some will go that way, some will go that way. Okay. But this is our circuit at time is equal to zero. Let's write our circuit where time goes to infinity. And using some of the concepts from the uh, previous problem one, we can kind of uh, piece together some of our uh, circuit. So draw a battery in here, 10 volts. For now, our switch is closed. We'll have our five ohm resistor, just a wire. For our inductor, we'll go ahead and clip out our capacitor. There we go. And I'll just go ahead and drop these in here real quick. So, inductor was there, capacitor was there, uh, and then we have the one last uh, five ohm capacitor, or yeah, five ohm capacitor right there. And now we know that uh, we know that this current will be induced and go through the rest of the circuit. We'll travel through here, and it'll notice it can't travel down this open terminal, so it'll bypass it. So it sends all the current that way. And then creates a closed loop that allows that current to move around the circuit. Uh, we know that we can treat it like this because uh, we say as time goes to infinity, we can say that infinity is equal to about 5 tau. So where 8 tau is greater than 5 tau, therefore our time went to infinity. So just the amount of time constants that we have. Uh, anything less than this, it wouldn't be in steady state. Anything less than this wouldn't be in steady state. Okay, so now all it is uh, is that we have V of X, so plus minus V of X, where that is going to be the voltage drop from here to there. This voltage is equal to this voltage because they're on the same wire. Uh, they have a hidden element, so they're on the same wire, have the same voltage. Uh, same deal right here. So this voltage at the bottom is equal to that voltage right there. So if we can find the voltage drop across that 5 ohm resistor, and because it is in parallel with the capacitor, uh, we can find the voltage of the capacitor at that given time. So let's go ahead and uh, look at that real quick. So if we just have this circuit with that one loop on it, just a simplified look real quick. Right, this is 5, this is 10, this is 5 here. We know we have a current flowing through here. Uh, you know, we have a couple ways to solve for this because we're looking for this voltage drop here. Voltage across R5. Uh, 
you can go and combine these down and find our equivalents, uh, and then you know solve for i using v over r. Uh, but that's kind of an extra step you really don't have to do. You can just do a uh, voltage division. Uh, but doing the first method is A-OK. -okay. That's, that's method one. Method two, uh, I would just do A voltage division. So if I want to find VR2, it'll be R5 over R equivalent times V of S. So 5 over... 5 plus 5 times 10 volts. It's the equivalent. These are in series. So it's the equivalent series. Series. So plugging those numbers in, we'll get VR2 to equal 5 volts. Okay. Uh, why we're solving for... VR2 is equal to 5 volts, because that's going to be V of C at 8 tau. Where this comes into play is for the energy, because remember they're asking for energy, is 1 half CV squared. And we have a capacitance value, and we just solve for our voltage value. So we can just go drop those in. Be 10 microfarads and voltage we just found was 5 volts squared and remember we want to keep this in a base unit so times 10 to the negative 6 farads and 5 volts squared okay so Go plug that in. Squared times ten times ten to the negative six times point five. And we'll get uh, one point two five times ten to the negative fourth joules. And that'll be our amount of energy that we have at that time.